Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you an updated guide for all four Elite Slayer mobs for 2019. Now previously I did a guide for this, but I didn't explain them clearly enough. And so after a proposal to release this updated guide, I was actually surprised many people wanted me to do this. First of all, you have to have 96 Slayer. It's strongly recommended that you have high combat stats and good combat gear. This is a high level slayer creature and it's called elite for a reason. Don't expect to kill this with mid level gear, okay? Now you're gonna have to have a lot of patience learning this. Even though this is not classified as a boss, but these monsters have so many mechanics. You know, I've seen a lot of people complaining in my previous guides saying, oh it's extremely difficult to learn this, oh I died 5 times while trying to get 1 kill. And you're right, it is pretty difficult to learn so you're definitely gonna need a lot of patience. So as a disclaimer, the task footage that's shown may be a little hard to understand, since I do kill them quickly, but I'll definitely try my best to explain. Finally, for the equipment and inventory slides, I'm not going to read every single item there, but rather only the important stuff. Of course, you can pause the video if you wish. Going by the first raptor key, let's get into living wyverns. They are located in the Asgarnian Ice Dungeon, which is past the Skeletal Wyvern Cave. You can get there quickly by using Dungeoneering Cape to Frost Dragon Resource Dungeon, or obviously if you don't have 99 Dungeoneering, you could otherwise use the Port Serum Lodestone, then go south. Here is my equipment setup. I recommend Dual Wield Melee because it's easier and safer. Magic is faster because they're weak to fire spells, but it's actually harder to learn and you take more damage. To start things off, you want to have Dual Dragors with a Precise 5, plus Aftershock 3 is optional. You want to bring the best melee armor. Amleto's Souls will provide you extra defense. For the Scrimshaw of Vampirism, this is your main healing source, so that is why you want to buy this. Finally, for the Auras, you want to bring Vampirism or the Brawler Aura. Here is my inventory setup. Other than Holy Overloads, Weapon Poison Plus Plus, Replenishment, and Restore Potions, this is what you want to bring. The Wormfire Potion is really important because it blocks the Fire Breath attack from the Wyverns. Then we have the Anti-Poison++ plus plus, and it will half the poison damage. Unfortunately, Venom Blood and the Instant Sticks do not work here. Obviously, you want to bring food here, especially if you're new. Alright, so here are the mechanics for the Living Wyverns. As soon as you enter, there's this thing called a Cold Mechanic, which is shown on the debuff bar. It will start at 20%, and every few seconds inside the cavern, it will get colder. It will reset by leaving or hopping worlds. Now the warmer you are, the more poison damage you take. You'll take around 900 poison damage every 5 seconds at 0% cold. So as the cold percentage increases, the poison damage is reduced, but the regular wyvern attacks do more damage, and they can hit up to 2.5k. Then at 90% or higher cold, they will frequently stun you for up to 10 seconds, which this can be cleared by using freedom. In order to warm up and reduce the cold percentage, you can light any of the fire pits and stand near them. You don't have to stand there for a very long time because it will reduce the cold percentage pretty fast. Wyverns attack with 3 different combat styles. However, if you're in melee distance, they will only attack with melee. When they do the poison fire breath attack, you will see this game message on the top of your head. Alright, so here is a strategy. The prayers you want to have are turmoil and deflect melee. So now you want to follow the ability bar rotation for regular revolution. For thresholds, you want to prioritize destroy, then assault, then slaughter, and finally blood tendrils. Using berserk can help a lot with DPS, especially if you're using replenishment potions, but if you're new, this can be extremely dangerous. Wyverns don't have a very high HP, so they'll die fairly quick. Sometimes you'll get hit by other combat styles, and it's because the wyverns are aggressive, and they'll attack you first as soon as they see you. Luckily, they will not pile on you, so only one wyvern will attack you at once. If you're being hit by other combat styles, this is because they attacked you first. Between every wyvern kill, I would try my best to use either bladed dive, barge, or surge towards it. This ensures that you only get hit by the melee attack. Overall, if you keep yourself in melee distance, you'll be fine. However, obviously if you're new, you're definitely going to struggle at this. When it comes to cold percentage, I like to keep mine at 70 to 90%. At 70% or higher cold, the poison damage is completely eliminated, so yeah, you don't have to worry about this. So when the cold percentage is at 90% or higher, 
Try to fight a wyvern near the fire pit so that you can gradually reduce this. Once again, you don't have to stand there for pretty long. If you still don't understand how I kill them, then I do have a raw footage of this, which I'll leave the link in the description. I got 51 kills in 11 minutes. That means in an hour you can get 280 kills, which equates to 500k Slayer XP per hour. So honestly, I find that this task is pretty decent for Slayer XP per hour, and when it comes to drops, their profit per hour is actually pretty good. Also, if you do get a Wyvern crossbow, then it's worth quite some money, so that is pretty amazing. The monster that drops Rapture Key part number 2 are the Ripper Demons. They're located in the abandoned mine just outside the Abbey Citadel. You'll use the Alcarid Lodestone, then run southeast. I'm using dual wield melee because once again, it's actually safer and easier to learn. I know people are going to be like, well Tony, you should use a cannon here with magic and it's faster, right? You're right, it is faster, but it's much more difficult to survive. The weapon you want to bring is an upgraded dark light. While it does require Dimension of Disaster, but it does insane damage to Ripper Demons. Then you want to have an offhand Drygor weapon with precise 5 perk. Of course, you want to bring your best armor. The main perks you want here are Hands Devoted 3, as well as Demon Slayer plus Genocidal. For the Amulet of Souls, it will provide you extra defense. Now Scrimshaw of Vampirism is going to be your primary healing source, so once again, don't forget to bring this. The only aura I would suggest would be Vampirism. Here is my inventory setup. You want to bring Holy Overloads, Weapon Poison Plus Plus, and Replenishment plus the Restore Potions. You also want to bring some food here. Infernal Urns will be useful for cleaning the Infernal Ashes. Finally, I would also suggest you bring an Emergency Teleport. Here are the Ripper Demon mechanics. As you can see right here, Ripper Demons use melee and they hit very fast and accurate. Anytime you move away from melee distance, they'll chase you and then use what is called Slaughter. For those who don't know what it is, it's a strong bleed ability. In order to avoid this, all you have to do is stay within melee distance. Now anytime you do get slaughtered, just use freedom and it will clear the bleeds. You'll see a yellow adrenaline bar on the top of its head. When the bar reaches full, it will jump in the air. Now if it lands on you, it's gonna instantly kill you. In order to avoid this, move a few squares away from the shadow spot, ideally northeast of this. As soon as the demon lands, you want to barge towards the demon so that way you can avoid getting slaughtered. The other mechanic is that when a ripper demon dies, it will spin rapidly and it will do constant damage. You can easily avoid this by moving away as soon as the demon dies. And finally for the last mechanic, if your HP is under 35%, they will start becoming aggressive. Since there are a lot of ripper demons here, this can be extremely dangerous. However, if you were to put this in your personal slayer dungeon, you will only have one or two of them attacking at once, so it's not an extremely big deal. So, let's get into the strategy. You want to pray turmoil and deflect melee. Follow my ability bar rotation for regular revolution. For threshold, you'll prioritize destroy, assault, slaughter, and finally blood tendrils. Now devotion is extremely helpful here, especially if you're struggling to survive. Once again, berserk can help a lot with DPS, especially if you're using replenishment potions, so that way you can get to thresholds faster. However, this can be extremely dangerous if you're new, so that's why you don't want to do this until you get familiar with this. The main strategy for this is just focus on DPS. I know they're pretty hard to kill at first, so it'll definitely take a while to get the hang of this. The faster you kill them, the less likely you'll get jumped on. I would also suggest that you barge or surge between every kill, so that way you can avoid getting hit by the spin attack. Also, it's very important that you keep your HP above 50%, or else you're going to be in danger of getting piled. If multiple Ripper Demons do attack you at once, then this is where the Emergency Teleport comes into play. So this is pretty much the strategy, and if you don't understand this, then I do have a raw footage for this, which I'll leave the link in the description. So in 16 minutes, I was able to kill 70 Ripper Demons. That means if you were to extrapolate this in an hour, you'll get 260 kills, for 700k Slayer XP per hour. This task is also pretty good for Crimson Charms, and it offers you pretty decent profit per hour. This is the best Elite Slayer monster for Slayer XP, so I would definitely add this to my prefer list once you get used to the mechanics. Raptor Key Part Number 3, Camel Warriors. They're located in an island east of Sofnum just by crossing the stones. 
The best way to get to soften them is by using the Pharaoh Scepter Teleport, or if you don't have that, that's fine because you could just use the Menifold's Lodestone and then cross the soften them. Here is my equipment setup. You want to use 2H Melee because they have the best AoE abilities. I know some people are going to suggest range, but it's a little bit difficult to survive because you don't get an alternative healing source. For the weapon, you want to have Noxious Scythe, but if you don't have that, you can otherwise use a Dragon Rider Lance. The perks I have are Precise 5 and Aftershock 3. Once again, you want to bring the best armor you have. The key perks you want to use are Enhanced Devoted 3 and Genocidal. The Amulet Souls will definitely give you extra defense. See, the main reason I like to use melee is because of Scrimshot Vampirism. For auras, you want to bring Vampirism or Brawler. Here is my inventory setup. You want to bring Holy Overloads, Weapon Poison Plus Plus, Replenishment Potions, and you definitely want to bring a lot of Super Restore Potions. Finally, bring some food and don't forget to bring Emergency Teleport as well. Because you're short on accuracy, ideally you want to bring Blood Night Hill if you can. Here are the mechanics for Camel Warriors. They attack with Mage or Range. Now Camel Warriors do not have a very high HP, but most of the time when you attack them, they'll immediately split into what are called Mirages, which are similar to Glacors. The Camel Warrior will then disappear until they're all killed. All these Mirages will use 4 different ancient spells from the ancient spellbook. Two out of the three Mirages have a special mechanic. For the Shadow Mirage, as soon as the Adrenaline Bar is full, they will do a special attack that drains a lot of prayer points. Then for the Blood Mirage, it will heal itself plus other two Mirages for up to 1k HP each. And finally for the Smoke Mirage, there is no special attack. When all three Mirages are killed, the Camel Warrior will show up once again, and it can finally be killed safely. Now anytime a Camel Warrior's Adrenaline Bar hits full, it will use either one of two attacks. A, the Sandstorm attack, or B, the Prayer Draining attack. Now this is really important. If you attempt to stun or bind a Camel Warrior, it will cause them to use the Sandstorm attack 2 seconds later. Standing inside the Sandstorm will constantly take damage. It starts at 50 damage and it will double for every tick you're inside. As soon as you see the Sandstorm, just move 1 or 2 squares away and you're completely safe. Alright, so here is a strategy. The prayers you want to use are Turmoil and Deflect Magic. Now honestly, I'm not really good at Camel Warriors, so please bear with me. I would generally use a basic ability as the first hit on the Camel Warrior because it will turn into 3 Mirages. Now this is really important. You want to prioritize killing the Shadow Mirage, then the Blood Mirage, and finally the Smoke Mirage. You'll also notice that a lot of times they do stack up pretty well, so that way you can save your Quake and Hurricane and kill multiple of them at once. Try to position yourself so you can hit all 3 of them at once. However, unfortunately, they sometimes do spread out a little further than that. You will splash pretty often on the Mirages because they'll reduce your accuracy. Finally, when you kill the Mirages, you pretty much want to use the Threshold to finish off the Camel Warrior. So you'll notice that the Camel Warriors are pretty spread out, and it's actually debatable whether you should use Barge or not. I like to use Barge here, but I probably wouldn't advise you to do so. The thing is, Barge can stun a target, so that's why if you stun them, they will unleash their Sandstorm attack. As most of these kills are time-gated, you don't want to use Berserk here. Now always make sure Quake and Hurricane are not on cooldown as soon as the Mirages spawn. Sometimes if you're getting piled and you're struggling to survive, you can use Devotion and extend the timer by killing the Mirages. Ideally, you want to fight these one-on-one -on -one, so try to avoid hitting more than one Camel Warrior because you'll otherwise face a lot of Mirages. Finally, if one of the Mirages hits you with an Ice Spell, you can either use Freedom or Barge towards the Mirage. Once again, I do have a full raw footage of this, which I'll leave the link in the description. I got 36 kills in 23 minutes doing this task. That means you get 90 kills per hour, which in turn is equal to 430k Slayer XP per hour. To be honest, the Slayer XP per hour and the overall GP per hour isn't all that great. However, if you want the rare chance of getting the Camel Staff, then this can actually sell for a lot. In my opinion, this is the least recommended Slayer mob I would do. So, the fourth and last elite slayer monster we have are the Akron Mammoths. They are located by sailing the Fremenic boat just north of the Lodestone and to your left. Here is the equipment setup. For your main hand, make sure you use a Drygore Rapier because it uses stab attacks. Then you want to bring any offhand Drygore weapon with precise 5 perk. 
of course, you want to bring the best armor you have. For the Amulet of Souls, it will give you extra defense and healing from Soul Split. Now your Scrimshaw Vampirism is going to be used as an extra healing source. The only aura I would really suggest would be Vampirism. For my inventory setup, you want to bring Holy Overloads, Weapon Poison Plus Plus, Replenishment, and the Restore Potions. Don't forget to bring some food. Now for the Magic Notepaper, it's going to be used for noting the Mammoth Tusk Drops. Here are the mechanics. Mammoths have very high HP and they use strong but slow melee attacks. They will also use the following melee abilities which are Sever, Smash, and Pulverize. If you try to stun a Mammoth, they'll use Freedom and break free of the stuns. At the start of the battle, usually they'll use Smash ability, which will disable protection prayers for 5 seconds. They also have an extremely slow but powerful range attack, and this actually hits through armor. It will take a few seconds for them to form a blue snowball on its tusks, and then it will throw it in the air. Now if it lands on top of you, it will do up to 4000 damage. Prayers can reduce this if you're using protect range. Fortunately though, this attack can be dodged by moving two squares away. Because it's a fairly slow attack, you have a lot of time to react and it will only damage you if it lands on top of you. Finally, they have the melee charge attack. So the mammoth will stand still and a blue adrenaline bar will start charging on top of its head. When the bar is full, it will start running over you and it can deal up to 8000 damage. Of course, if you use protect melee, it will reduce the damage significantly. They can charge for up to 3 times before they go back to their normal attacks. If you're not within the path they're trying to charge at you, then you can avoid this attack. I mean, this mechanic nowadays isn't used very often, so you don't always have to worry about this. And finally, if you're away from melee distance, it will cause them to throw snowballs at you, which will deal massive damage. As you're gonna use dual wield melee, you don't have to worry about this. This mechanic is ignored if they're using the charge attack. Alright, so here is a strategy for Akram Mammoths. You want to pray Turmo and Soul Split. Once again, follow the ability bar rotation for regular revolution. The thresholds you want to prioritize are Destroy, Assault, Slaughter, and finally Blood Tendrils. Once again, you can use Berserk here and it's really helpful for DPS, but like I said, it can be pretty dangerous if you're new especially. Between every Mammoth kill, you can just surge or barge towards this because they're pretty spread out. You mainly just want to focus on DPS as they have very high HP, but you can pretty much soul split back their damage. As a matter of fact, you can do this even without Scrimshaw Vampirism, but if you're new, you may as well keep this on anyways. Once again, the range attack is completely avoidable if you walk two squares away as soon as you see this. Otherwise, if you can't move, then you want to flick protect range. Alright, so I do have a full raw footage of this, which I'll leave the link in the description. I was able to kill 52 Mammoths in 21 minutes. That means you can get almost 150 kills per hour, which in turn is equal to 630k Slayer XP per hour. In my opinion, the Slayer XP rate is pretty good, but you won't get any nice drops from this. So this wraps up my guide for all 4 Elite Slayer monsters. Now I know many people are going to kill this for the Slayer logs, so yeah, I wish you all good luck. Once again, there is a bit of a learning curve for this, so please don't get frustrated if you don't get it down in a few tries. Trust me, it took me many tries to do this at first when I was trying to learn this. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, because I'll definitely do more combat and slayer guides in the future.